Hello everyone, you're welcome to Programme 5 of Hidden Kimbara. We're here at Sea Park House. Now Sea Park House is right across from the town. You can see the town just over the head of us there and we're facing the pier head. And a little bit to the left, you can see Dungora Castle. And as you can see, it was a prize site. We don't know who lived in this house when it became a serious part of Kimbara's history. The last family who lived here were the Donlands. Our interest in it now is not to do with the Donlands, it's to do with Sea Park House as a symbol of the famine in Kimbara. But our story starts a little bit earlier than the famine because in 1838 the British government divided Ireland into 130 poor law unions and each poor law union was responsible for relief of the destitute in its own area. Now in 1846 the first phase of the famine occurred and in Kimvara the, the whole area around the Clada and, in, um, and small time labourers around the community were badly hit and so a meeting was held in the courthouse and uh, at this meeting the parish priest Father Arthur was appointed the chairman and the secretary was Dr Dennis Hines and they set up a Kimvara Famine Relief Committee to get subscriptions from the community and they collected almost £300 which was a, a lot of money at the time and this money was used to buy food to assist people who were suffering from this famine in 1846. And 400 people benefited from that. So it was a great success. But of course, what they didn't realize was that this was just the beginning of a total failure of the potatoes. In 1847, the entire potato crop in Kimvara was destroyed. People were literally destitute and hundreds of them sought to go to the workhouse in Gort. Now the workhouse took 400 and then closed its doors. It said it couldn't take any more. The Kimvara Famine Relief Committee were totally overwhelmed and they couldn't collect enough money to deal with all the hunger and deprivation in Kimvara. So a decision was taken in Gort that a famine hospital be acquired in Kimvara and this was the house that was available. It was owned by Mr St George at the time. The famine hospital was to take, it was designed to take the people who couldn't be taken in the workhouse in Gort. A very fateful decision was taken by the British government as well which had very serious repercussions and this extension said that people were no longer required to be in the workhouse in order to get relief. That relief could be given outside of the workhouse in Gort. And hence, people who came into the famine hospital here could be given relief. Now this was fine, as long as the numbers remained reasonably stable. But the government also made another addition to the Poor Law Act, which required each union area that is, the Gort Union area, was to become responsible for financing famine relief in its own area. And so the Gort Union uh, agreed on a rate of five shillings in order to finance all the famine relief. Poor law rate was, was levied on people with property. And all the people with property were up in arms about paying that. And there's a great little anecdote in the Galway Vindicator of the time which described uh, a meeting in Gort called by the property owners to protest about this exorbitant 
great. And it uh, quotes a Mr. Burke from Kinvara as being so annoyed with this five shillings rate on the basis that it would ruin them that he was reported to have said that it would be better if they were all sent to New South Wales. Now, ironically, it probably would have been better if they had been sent to New, New South Wales, but that wasn't going to happen. And as a result of it, what became known as the Kimvara Anti-Rent Campaign was launched. And when the administrators of the, of the Gork Union came to Kimvara to collect the rent, they, they found the whole street barricaded and they were pelted with rocks and fellas with pitchforks chased them and so on and the rent couldn't be collected. It took 500 soldiers and 50 police to make sure that they weren't going to be kicked out of town again. What happened for the famine relief was that any able-bodied people were put on some kind of public works and got paid and then they'd use that money to buy food and this food had been acquired by the union, the Gort Union, and stored in a storehouse in Kinvara. Now, there's no record, as far as I know, that tells us where it was stored. John Curtin was the man that was in charge of the stores. And uh, as the, the Vindicator reports, uh, he was investigated. Uh, I suppose they all were investigated, but he was investigated and found to be shortchanging his customers. He had false... Uh, scales and he got fired. Now he wasn't the only one, there was a Mr Geraghty as well from Shenaglish who also got fired. But it just goes to show that you know in times of terrible crisis that terrible things happen. Now one last thing about uh, this. this, this place then became absolutely overwhelmed with people. Dr, uh, poor Dr Hines himself got cholera in his treatment of people here and he decided that it wasn't just from hunger that people were dying. They were dying of cholera, of which is a, as a, a fever uh, that's associated with, with starvation. And so they decided to also rent a fever hospital in the town. Now, they, it was in a shop called Kilkelly's. Now, when I was a young fella growing up in Kinvara, Kilkelly's shop was across from uh, Eurospar, across the road. And uh, it, uh, the person living in there was Paddy Kilkelly, and Paddy used to work up in Seamount for the nuns. And I remember being in that in his house a good few times when I was little because my mother was very friendly with his sister. And uh, there was a counter in there in shelves. So I presumed that that was Kilkelly's shop. Now, of course, it's much better known today as the Convara Credit Union. Thank you.